present, we will call to order the Finance Committee meeting of Monday, July 26th, 2021. And Dave, I'll ask you to call the roll, please. Council President Abbas? Uh, present. Alder Carter? Present. Alder Brevere? Here. Alder Furman? Present. Alder Figueroa Cole? Here. Alder Curry? Here. Mary O'Quorum? Thank you. Can we have the meeting instructions, please? Welcome to our virtual meeting. If you lose connection at any point during the meeting, you can reconnect by clicking the link or calling the number in your original email. Members, if you are able, please activate, please activate your video and keep it on for the duration of the meeting. Staff, if you're able, please activate your video when you are speaking. All panelists, that is, alders and staff, have the ability to mute and unmute themselves. Please continue to use the raise hand feature when you'd like to be recognized to speak, ask questions, or request a roll call vote. Lowering your hand will take you out of the queue. Members of the public who have registered to speak, the name you entered in Zoom must match the name you entered in registration. You will remain muted until called upon. The clerk will tell you when your time is up. After speaking, a member of the body may ask you a question. If you need to share documentation uh, with the Finance Committee, please send it to the email list on today's agenda. Mayor, the floor is yours. Thank you. We have no general public comment today. So are there any disclosures or recusals on today's agenda from members of the body? Seeing none, uh, we will move on to the consent agenda. Um, the only item we have registrants on is uh, item nine. So we'll take those before we go into closed session. I'd also like to note that the motion on items one and three is to refer to a future finance committee meeting. Um, I believe it's the personnel board uh, failed to make quorum and wasn't able to take them up. Um, are there other items that alders uh, wish to have excluded from the consent agenda. Um, sorry, I should note, obviously the items in closed session, items eight and nine will be excluded from the consent agenda. Are there any other items that others wish to have excluded? Going once, going twice. All right, uh, so then President Abbas, a motion on items one through seven. Move motion to approve consent agenda. Second. Right, moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda uh, with the understanding that the motions on items one and three is referral. Um, is there any objection to recording unanimous vote in favor of the consent agenda? Seeing no objection. Uh, we will record that unanimous vote on items one through seven. Um, and I think uh, unless there's objection, we'll take the public comment on item nine, uh, and then we'll go into closed session um, on items eight and nine together, uh, and then come out with a report on both. Um, Mayor, I think those who are registered on item nine are part of the presentation, just so you know. Uh, yes, but they can't be they can't be part of the presentation in closed session. No, I'm just saying uh, oh, okay, the presentation so, in open session and then thank with you. the option of going into closed session. Well, so uh, in that case, is there any objection uh, to us just going forward with item nine first? Uh, we'll definitely want to go into closed session on item eight. Um, so we'll take item nine out of order unless there's objection. All right, seeing none, then Dave, I'll hand it over to you for the presentation on item nine, and you can call in our registrants as appropriate. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I think we need to have uh, Matt McLejewski being able to share his screen. And then we need to, uh, I think, elevate... Um, uh, let's see who's ever in the 
JP Beitler and John uh, Linen, if you could elevate those folks, they'll be a part of the presentation, I believe. Is that right, Matt? You're muted, Matt, if you're trying to talk. Yes, sorry, my apologies. Our speakers should have a prompt to unmute themselves here. Okay, great, thank you. Take it away, Matt. All right, can everyone see the presentation on the yes. screen? Yep. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Matt Miklojewski, the Economic Development Director for the city. And I'm here with some of my colleagues this afternoon to provide you with an update on our negotiations for a new Embassy Suites hotel within Block 105 downtown. By way of background, Block 105 is half of the Judge Doyle Square project. Block, one, block 88 is the block immediately adjacent to the municipal building. That's where we have the Wilson Street Garage and Stonehouse's Novo Affordable Housing Project under construction. Block 105 is then right across the street. It's the location of the former Government East structure along Pinckney Street between Doty and Wilson. This image shows you where Block 105 is located. And Block 105 is divided into two parts. There's the portion that's immediately along Pinckney Street, which you'll see uh, more darkly shaded. And this half of the block is where the proposed Embassy Suites Hotel would be located. The second portion, the back portion of the Block 105 block is the proposed location of likely an apartment building at the future date. But this afternoon, we're only gonna be focusing on that front portion of Block 105, again, the location of the Embassy Suites. This is another image that shows you where that hotel will be located right along Pinckney Street with the opportunity to have a future apartment building on the back portion of the block. Just by way of background, in 2016, we executed a development agreement with Beitler Real Estate for the construction of a hotel. And what we, since that time, Beitler Real Estate has formed a partnership with Mortensen Development to develop a specific Embassy Suites hotel on Block 105 in accordance with that original development agreement. Over the next couple of months, the Common Council is going to be presented with a series of agreements that will finalize the sale and the potential development of this hotel. And our update before you this afternoon is to uh, provide you with a, an introduction to those agreements. By way of background, the two primary development partners are Beitler Real Estate. Beitler is the master developer for Block 105. They will assign the development rights to Mortensen Development to develop the Embassy Suites Hotel, retaining the remaining development rights for the back portion of the property. Mortensen Development, in turn, will be the developer, builder, and owner of the new Embassy Suites Hotel. There's going to be a third partner in the future that's going to be the hotel operator which the hotel owner will hire to run the operator, and that operator has not yet been identified. Beitler Real Estate is a 40-year-old development firm out of Chicago. They've developed over 10 million square feet of real estate. And Mortensen Development out of Minnesota is a development firm with significant hospitality experience, having developed over 133 hotel-related projects valued at $4.6 billion. In addition to those two developers on the private side, the city team that has been involved in the discussions with the development group includes myself, Dave, Kevin, Matt Walker, Connie Thompson, Sabrina Tully, Kevin Furkow, and we've also been working with Ellie Westman Chen at Destination Madison. By way of background, the Embassy Suites will have about 260 rooms, and it'll be a nine-story building, including many of the amenities that one expects to find within an Embassy Suites, including restaurant and a fitness center. We hope to close on financing by the end of this year, with construction to begin soon thereafter. And this will provide much-needed hotel rooms within proximity to Monona Terrace. By way of background to those that are new to the Council, one of the reasons that the city moved forward with the Judge Doyle Square project was to be able to provide a hotel within close walking distance to Monona Terrace so that Monona Terrace had a bigger room block that they were able to sell to potential meetings and conventions. 
along with the Hilton that is already located right next to Monona Terrace. This is an image showing what the embassy suites will look like. And uh, this is basically the facade along Pinckney Street is what you see looking towards Lake Monona. There are gonna be five documents that are gonna require Common Council approval in the months ahead. And I will touch on each of the five. The first is an amendment to the development agreement. As noted earlier, we executed our original development agreement with Beitler Real Estate in 2016, amending it in 2019. And we'll be asking the Common Council to assign the development rights for the embassy suites from Beitler Real Estate over to Mortensen Development. We're also gonna be shifting from a lease of Block 105 to Mortensen to a sale of Block 105, which I'll talk about later, and also changing some terms to the parking agreement. Another important change to the development agreement is as currently structured, the development agreement provides the city with some ability to approve the hotel operator. And what we'll be doing is we'll be adjusting the development agreement to allow the hotel owner to select an operator of their choosing, as long as that operator is approved by Hilton. And again, the Embassy Suites is a Hilton brand, so we feel very confident that if Hilton approves the operator, that it will be, in fact, a good operator for this hotel. We're also adjusting a previous restriction to the Block 88 apartment project that will now allow their tenants to use services such as Airbnb, should they choose. The second agreement that the Common Council is gonna be asked to approve is the purchase agreement. And we propose to sell that half of Block 105 to Mortensen Development for about $4 million, consistent with an appraisal that we received last year. By the time we are ready to present a, a final document for your approval, that purchase price may be reduced slightly compensate for some environmental remediation work and some fill removal costs that are needed. And we're still in the process of negotiating exactly what that would look like. As noted earlier, this is a shift from what was previously contemplated to be a lease between the city and, and the developer to a sale. And this has uh, some advantages, especially given the current financial condition of the parking utility, in that we'll be able to receive the approximately $4 million earlier rather than later, which will help the parking utility to reimburse the cost associated with the Wilson Street garage construction. And finally, uh, the purchase agreement is gonna include a provision that requires the embassy suites to have a franchise agreement with the owner for a minimum of 20 years. And this will help provide assurance that the property stays as a hotel for uh, at least the next couple of decades. The third document that the council is gonna be asked to approve is a parking lease. There is no car parking provided on block 105 for the hotel. There's some bike parking, but no car parking. And as such block 105, this, this embassy suites hotel is gonna depend on the Wilson Street garage to provide the parking that it needs. As such, we're proposing to have a lease of up to a hundred unassigned spaces within the Wilson Street garage with the ability of the hotel to lease up to 200 parking spaces if demand exists, or to reduce the number of parking spaces leased if demand isn't there. And we've also negotiated that although a minimum of 40 spaces must be made available at all times within the Wilson Street garage, the parking utility retains the ability to work with the hotel to locate some of their spaces to other parking utility facilities if there's significant demand on a particular day for the Wilson Street Garage. In other words, if it's a slow day for the Wilson Street Garage, all of those leased spaces can stay within the Wilson Street Garage. But if we're having peak demand for the Wilson Street Garage, then some of those spaces can be valeted over to another parking utility facility, such as Capitol Square North. And this allows the hotel and the parking utility, again, to adjust the usage of the Wilson Street Garage by the hotel based on their needs and also the needs of the parking utility. It should be noted that the, the rental rate that the hotel will be required to pay per space will be whatever the 24 seven rate is at a particular point in time. Currently that's $270 per month. Over time though, as 
the parking utility increases the rate of the Wilson Street garage, the hotel owner will need to pay what that revised rate is. The initial parking lease will be for 40 years with two 10-year renewals. The fourth document that the Common Council will be asked to approve is the room block agreement. And as mentioned earlier, the really the purpose behind this hotel is to have a facility that can serve Monona Terrace and to provide Monona Terrace and destination with a block of rooms that they can guarantee for conferences and meetings along with the existing Hilton room block. And as such, uh, we're gonna have a room block agreement that's gonna spell out a number of rooms that must be kept open for convention and conference goers within a certain period of time. We're still negotiating the details of that room block agreement, but we wanted to bring to your attention today that there will be a room block agreement that will set aside this important block of rooms to help support Monona Terrace. The rates that will be charged within that room block will be set by the hotel owner, but the hotel owner is going to have to be reasonable in those rates that they meet market conditions. And that initial room block agreement will be in place for 20 years uh, to match the term of the franchise agreement with the embassy suites. Finally, the council is gonna be asked to approve a temporary construction easement. And what this will allow is for Mortensen Development to use the backside of Block 105 as a staging area during construction of the hotel. In addition to Common Council approval of these five documents, there are gonna be a couple of other city approvals that are gonna be needed before construction can begin. Uh, first, the Urban Design Commission is gonna to need to approve uh, some items that received only initial approval before uh, related to the facade and the site plan. And likewise, uh, prior to issuing building permits, uh, the project will require administrative sign-off uh, for items that were included in the approval letter that was issued earlier this year. The focus today and, and our focus as of late has been on the front portion of Block 105 where the embassy suites will be located. Beitler Real Estate though will continue to retain development rights for the back portion of Block 105 through December of next year. And most likely that'll be an apartment project, although we currently don't have any specific plans before us today. Uh, but certainly as, as those plans uh, come to the city, uh, we will likely be coming uh, back to you with additional information about that second portion of the project. As noted earlier, uh, Beitler Real Estate and Mortensen Development both have representatives at the meeting this afternoon. And I'm likewise joined by many of my city colleagues who have been working on this project as well. And we're happy to answer any questions that anyone has. Thank you, Matt. Are there, uh, well, let's see. I'm gonna ask the lawyers to keep us in, in line in terms of needing to go into closed session or not. Um, maybe Kevin, do you wanna just outline what kinds of things would make us want to go into closed session? Uh, <laughs> well, I think that if you have general questions for the for, for Mortensen or for Beitler um, on any of these agreements or their development, that's that's fine. If you have anything specific for me or for staff um, related to you know anything that would be a negotiating point. So if you have suggestions for us, for example, I, I would keep that to closed session. Um, so I, I keep things kind of general for Mortensen and Beitler. Of course, they're listening to me. So <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. So I think let's do questions um, for the partners now uh, and or factual questions for staff. And if we um, want to get into um, questions or advice on uh, bargaining position, we can take ourselves into closed session. Are there any questions? Alder Carter. I, have a, I just have an easy question for Mortensen. At what point, and maybe I missed it, would they become the owners of the embassy um, hotel? And at currently, do they operate 
how many hotels in Minnesota? Uh, this is Nate Gundrum with uh, Mortensen. Can can you hear me okay, Elder Member Carter? Yes, we can. Wonderful. Um, so we would we would be the owner from day one. So Mortensen would fund 100% of the equity. We would be the um, borrower on a construction loan. And like I said, we would own the hotel from from day one, from the from the day we purchased the site from the city. Uh, regarding the number of hotels that we own. Uh, it's ranged over the years from up to, um, let's see, I think at the peak, we had six hotels, including a convention center hotel in uh, Portland, Oregon, a 600 room Hyatt Regency. At this point, we have ownership in in two hotels, one downtown Minneapolis and one downtown Phoenix. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Alder. Uh, President Abbas. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Uh, not sure if this question needs us to be in a closed session, but I'm going to give a try and then Kevin can uh, uh, help us. Uh, so my question, Matt, for you is regarding energy efficiency. I'm very well aware uh, hotels that really have high EUI energy use index. And we as a uh, city, we cannot mandate hotels at any property going above and beyond building code, whatever the state codes are, which is 2005 Ashley and IECC. However, as an owner, while we're selling, my understanding is we could still put some conditions around sustainability and energy efficiency and asking for high EUI when they develop the hotel. So I'm just wanting to get clarity uh, as a from city point of view, is there uh, what steps we could take to really make sure we, we set those bars, high bars for uh, sustainability and carbon reduction? Uh, I mean, from a strictly uh, legal perspective, if that's something that we want to negotiate into the documents, we've done that in the past, um, how that impacts feasibility of the project is sort of a separate thing. And you, uh, I, I don't know what Mortensen has done in the past along those lines, and maybe some of that's already being worked in. I don't know if Nate has a uh, follow-up on that, but um, that, those are my thoughts on it. I, I'm happy to chime in, Kevin, if you'd like. I mean, we have a very robust sustainability plan and design for the project that's been you know, reviewed by the Urban Design Commission, reviewed by Planning Commission, reviewed by City Council. Um, a, a few of those things include a high, you know, an energy efficient enclosure, um, you know, just some of the low hanging fruit, low, low flow fixtures, you know, we're meeting the bird friendly glass ordinance, but perhaps the biggest thing that we're doing here, and this is an upgrade to the standard building code. And it's actually an upgrade to the brand standards for embassy suites. And it really gets at the root of, you know, um, ho hotels being you know, energy hogs, if you will, and trying to offset that to the largest extent possible. It's the, it's the guest room um, mechanical system. And I don't want to get into too much of the uh, uh, the technical nature of it, but there's a certain mechanical system that you can put in a hotel room called a VRF system, a variable refrigerant system. And that is the most energy efficient system that you can put in a hotel. And that's a, it was a tough decision to make because it's a high first cost, um, but it's the right thing to do from a sustainability perspective. And that's a, that's um, probably the, the, one of the biggest things that we're doing uh, in, in, in that regard. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Alder. Alder Revere. Thank you, Mayor. I have a quick question for Nate, please. Uh, hi, Nate. I know that you have a, a meeting with the city staff uh, later this week to discuss the uh, final sign-off requirements for the land use approvals for the proposed hotel. I was wondering if you know at this point in time what your what your thinking is on when you would uh, visit with uh, our friends at the neighborhood association one more time, and then more most importantly move on to the urban design commission for final approval of the 
uh, plans that the common council's already approved. Absolutely. Yeah, we were actually hoping to get that scheduled sometime during the month of August, Alder Bevere. Uh, so we were actually, you were on my list of people to reach out to uh, to help coordinate that. We can reach out to Eli directly, uh, but we'd like to get that in the calendar before we go to UDC and um, likely in early September. Okay, great. I really appreciate that. And I'm obviously thrilled that we're at this point in time that we can proceed. So I look forward to um, seeing you virtually with the Neighbor Association Steering Committee sometime in the next month then and on to UDC. So thanks a lot. Sounds good. You bet. Thank you, Alder. Uh, Alder Carter, another question? Yeah, Nate, just a quick question, and uh, this concerns, uh, you might not be able to answer it at this time, maybe at a later date, but the air quality and being able to control that via rooms and, and, and uh, other common areas post-COVID, has that been an industry change, and have you incorporated anything? Um, so I can't speak to the technical nature of it, but we will, we have included a kind of a make, it's called a makeup air system. Um, and I'm not sure how many air exchanges that, um, makeup air system re results in, but that will be part of the hotel. Um, there is also, I don't know that this necessarily answers your question, but it's more along the lines of sustainability. We will be incorporating an energy management system into the guest rooms that um, can monitor um, both motion and it's uh, heat sensitive as well. So if the room is unoccupied, it shuts down um, you know, all the lighting, the mechanical system, uh, basically anything that's generating power. Um, and then the last thing that I'd offer is Hilton has formed a partnership since the beginning of COVID um, with, <laughs> with um, Lysol, like the, the cleaning um, su supply company, and there are uh, some additional uh, standards uh, that have been put into place from a uh, operating perspective um, when a hotel guest checks out to make sure the room is uh, as sanitary as possible. So um, that's more on the operating side, but thought I'd offer that up as well. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Alder. Are there any other questions of a factual nature? Alder Revere. Thank you again, Mayor. I don't have any further questions for our registrants, but I do have uh, a question for Sabrina Tolly that I think she can skillfully uh, answer in open session. Uh, Alder, I know that it, at least one of your colleagues wants to go into closed session. Oh, okay. I know okay. that the staff team was saying that we likely would not go into closed session. So you'd prefer that I ask the parking question in closed session, Mayor? It doesn't matter to me. I'm just saying if you want uh, uh, Sabrina to not have to skill, skillfully navigate around <laughs> uh, issues, which I'm sure she can, uh, that you will have the opportunity to ask in closed session. Thank you. I, I do have full faith in Sabrina, obviously, uh, but I don't want to jump ahead if there are other questions for registrants from out of town. I, I would like to ask Sabrina a question in open session, if I might. I Go ahead, Alder. Okay. Thanks very much. So, uh, Sabrina, thanks for being with us, of course. Uh, it, it seems to me as this uh, uh, negotiations are, have come to a successful conclusion here that perhaps the, the main question that policymakers might have might be the, the increase in parking uh, lease that's proposed here. Could you, obviously, in open session, speak generally uh, as to your level of comfort on behalf of the parking utility with um, that aspect of the proposal. Sure, and I assume you're uh, referring to the increase in the number of spaces uh, that will potentially be provided, correct? Exactly. Um, yeah, I think um, just from my perspective, the flexibility built in there, um, you know, we have several other uh, parking facilities in the downtown area. Uh, this provides, uh, as negotiated, a guarantee of 40. Uh, parking spaces at the Wilson Garage. Uh, any uh, number above that, uh, we do have the 
um, authority in, in that contract is negotiated to relocate those to alternative facilities. Uh, so I think, you know, based on the, the levels and the decreases we're seeing uh, overall in demand as a result from COVID, and many of which will likely be longer term with ongoing telecommuting, uh, at least part time from a number of employers, I, you know, I don't anticipate that we're going to see pre-COVID um, types of demands during weekday uh, for, for some time. Very good. So you, you, you can say that you really have no reservations with how this is structured as presented to us this afternoon by Matt. That's correct. Very good. That's great. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alder. Uh, any other open session questions? Alder Figueroa, call. This is for the one of the people from the hotel. Um, so do you have any programming um, examples or experience that do community engagements in other hotels um, in Minnesota or across the country? Things like um, providing some kind of resources to the community or programming or, or partnering with um, small businesses or small hotels, I mean, small um, restaurants around the area or issues of equity and inclusion. Do you have any anything like that um, already established within your brand? Um, this is Nate Gundrum with Mortensen. Um, I can I can speak to um, the hotel that I mentioned that we own downtown Minneapolis. It's a AC hotel, a Marriott brand that's located in the downtown central business district, similar to uh, the Embassy Suites in Madison. And you know, part of our operating protocol is is to engage the community, and we do that in a variety of ways. We do that through um, pop up opportunities for um, you know local bars, local restaurants. We will host uh, things like uh, you know, wine and painting events. Uh, we will open up our lobby to local bands on the weekends. Um, we have rented our, our meeting space to uh, different community organizations, nonprofits, et cetera. Um, so that would, that would probably be the best example that I could, uh, the best recent relevant example I could speak to. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Alder. Right, I have no other Alders um, with their hands up. Um, I Just to confirm, are there questions uh, for closed session? Yes. Uh, all right, so I think then uh, President Abbas. So we're going in a closed session, correct? Yes. One of, uh, Alder Furman would like us to go into closed session, so we will do so. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, I need to do motion, and then I need to read the closed session statement. Correct. Correct. Okay. Move the motion for a discussion for closed session regarding the uh, block one zero five. Second. Closed session is when the finance committee consider the following matter, it may go into a closed session pursuant to section 19.851A Wisconsin statute, which reads as follows. Deliberating or negotiating the purchasing of a public property is the investing of uh, public funds or conducting other specified public businesses whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session. If the finance committee does not go into closed session notice is hereby given pursuant to section 19.852 Wisconsin statute that it may reconvene in open session without waiting 12 hours as specified in the statute. All right, so it's been moved and seconded to go into closed session as requires a roll call vote. Dave, uh, would you call the roll please? All in favor, aye. Those opposed, no, as your name is called. Council President Abbas? Aye. Alder Carter? Aye. Alder Verveer? Aye. Alder Furman? Aye. Alder Figueroa Cole? Aye. Alder Curry? 
Aye. Uh, it's unanimous, Mayor. Right. So we will move into closed session now, and uh, we'll ask folks uh, to leave us while we do so, and uh, except for the relevant staff. And just to note that when we come out of this closed session, actually, I should ask, Dave, uh, do we have a an open session presentation on item eight, or is that an entirely closed session item? I believe it's entirely closed session. Right. So um, what I would propose then is that we stay in closed session uh, for uh, both the, the end of item nine and all of item eight. Um, and then we'll come back into open session after both of those are dispensed with. So Aaron, that means that you get to stick around.
Thank you. All right. So coming out of the finance committee's closed session, we have reports on two items. On item eight, uh, which was our bargaining update, we received uh, the update and had uh, questions answered on it. And on item nine, which was the presentation and discussion on block 105 of the Judge Doyle Project's uh, hotel development, we discussed the briefing that we received in open session um, and the project uh, overall. Is there any other items for the finance committee tonight? Uh, seeing uh, May, from Mayor, me? Mayor, point of order, are we supposed to do a roll call coming out of closed session? Didn't know. No, only going into closed session. Thank you. Yep. Seeing no other business, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded to adjourn. Is there any objection to recording unanimous vote in favor of adjournment? Seeing no objection, we are adjourned. Thank you all. Have a good night. Good night.